Hi again, it, it's me, Matthias, the curator of Stitch Buddy, and this is the second video of a series where I show you how to add shapes um, to existing or new designs with Stitch Buddy 3.0. And in the last video, I showed you already how to create paths, which could be used to be outlined or filled with stitches, and we create a small flower there. Um, in this video, I will show you how to fill and outline the, these shapes. And in the third one, I will address some additional topics. So uh, let's start with our demo design here. Um, I will switch it to a structure or underlay view where it's more easier to uh, view the structure and the underlay of a design. Um, and I just let me zoom in a little bit. Um, and we left in the last video with a shape. Um, we created it with the add shape um, functionality here, and I saved it to my desktop. So when I'm using this dialog of adding a shape, there is not only a save toolbar item, but also I can open existing ones. Here's my flower path I created in the last lesson. And as you can see, this is a flower with a stem, two leaves, two blossoms. And um, well, if, if you're opening an existing path, it will be added to the current, already current defined path. So um, it's important to delete an existing path if you want to start from scratch. I didn't do that um, a few seconds ago because I hadn't an existing pass, but we will cover that in a minute um, later on. So first I'd like to um, add some zigzag um, stitches for the stem of this flower, um, because currently the pass contains the whole flower. I need to delete some um, parts I don't need at the moment. So I'm just right clicking here, for example, on the leaf and delete this set path. Um, again, with this one, you can see there's a shortcut here, which is command backspace. So I can also just open the context menu, press command backspace, which is an easier way to do that. And we will do this a couple of times in this lesson, so don't be surprised. Um, okay, now that's only the stem. I, I mentioned that should not have a single run. Stitch is a little bit too narrow for, for a stem. I will change to a zigzag stitch here. Um, the stitch length is basically controlling the, the width of this zigzag stitch. It should be um, a, a slider stem here. The spacing is the distance between two um, penetration points here. I keep it as it is. And th there is no path to be filled. Um, actually, I would receive an error me message if I try because these paths are not closed. I mentioned this in the previous lesson. So here I use the fill type no fill and just generate the stitches. Um, I, I receive an, a warning or an information message it reminds me that if I have broad zigzag stitches or even if I filled uh, a path, there is some underlay or might be an underlay required. We will cover this in the next video, looking into some um, additional topics there. So for the moment, I will just check to not see this message again, which can be changed in the preferences of the app. And here's my stem, well, in, in blue, because that was the last color, I'll change this to a green one. So maybe something like, uh, to switch or I will switch to Janome threads and take, for example, a yellow green here for the stem. So that was the first step. Now we will continue with the leaves. So again, I'm using the shape um, menu. Um, and as I mentioned, here is my last pass still present. And if I would open now um, the saved flower, it would just double the stem. So I delete the existing path and again, open the file I've saved. And doing very similar now, just removing the stem, um, delete that path or as mentioned, using the shortcuts. 
Um, so uh, the only thing which is left now are the leaves. Um, they should have an outline with the with a triple run stitch, which is a little bit thicker than a, a single run stitch, but nevertheless a, a narrow outline only. Um, therefore, I would increase the stitch length to something like two millimeters or two two point two. Um, sorry, here's the German settings, so it's two point two for you in the US. Um, the fill type, I would use a standard tatami fill. Um, I will cover tatami fills in the next video as well. And keeping just the, the default settings here, which is fine for the moment. And well, basically I'm, I, I'm done. So just generate the stitches. And now you can see there are, again, in the last color, which was yellow green, two additional parts of the design. One is the filling. Um, the other one is the outline. So again, I will change here, well, maybe the filling to a darker green. Um, yeah, that's okay. So, and you won't be surprised a third and last time for the blossoms. Um, again, deleting the current path opening the saved one. Um, sorry for this repetitive actions here. And sorry for the dog showing up as well. And um, now once again, deleting the stem, the leaf, second leaf, and this one as well, just keeping the blossoms. Um, again, with a triple run stitch for the outline, with a tatami fill, a uh, default fill here. Um, there, it might be a good idea to actually fill both blossoms separately or only to fill one and copy and paste it in Stitch Buddy um, using the, the already added stitches there. Um, there's a reason for that. I will cover in the third video as well. Um, Nevertheless, for the moment, I just keep it as it is and generate the stitches here. Changing the colors again for the filling, um, something like blue, or maybe a baby blue, and a darker outline there. Again, some blue shade, or I don't know, solar blue, something like that. Doesn't matter really. So now I've added a flower to my um, demo design here. I will just toggle the, the structure view I used to show you the actual stitches and penetration points here, um, either by the menu or now I'm using command and the number nine. And you can see how it will stitch out um, by by uh, command and one, I'll just hide the jump stitches. So that's how I can add a shape to an existing design or of course to a new design. Um, if you have added elements to in the design, be sure that you center it afterwards to make sure that as you change the dimensions of the design, here I've added something to the top of it, um, the middle of the design is no longer in the middle of the hoop, which confuses some embroidery machines. So be sure to center a design after you added elements, what I just did. Um, now zooming out, you can see it's probably centered in the hoop and maybe even more important, be sure to make a stitch run once you edit um, elements to your design or modify the design. You never know how it might stitch out in, in reality and make sure that you're not really um, harming a project you already have. Just do, use some, some test fabric and make a test run, a trial run for that. I'm really, really, really highly recommended. Um, okay, a as mentioned several times, there will be a third video um, where we will add, uh, look at some additional topics like the tatami fill, um, adding underlays, um, and even when it might be necessary to add filling separately. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching, and I'm looking forward to your comments and feedbacks.